Everyone, thank you for taking the time out to join us for our Measuring and Managing Performance and Supply Chain and Logistics Operations webinar. Uh, this webinar, the next hour, gives you a high-level overview of the topics that are covered as part of the class of the same name. Um, this is your opportunity to talk to an expert, ask your questions. Uh, if you're interested, we have a course November 4th through 6th here on the Georgia Tech campus in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about that course, there's the URL, www.scl.gotech.edu forward slash MMPSCLO. Uh, click on that. It'll give you days, uh, agenda, who the course is tailored for, and links to register online if you can join. Uh, today, our presenter will be Paula Ferguson. Uh, Paula is a consultant, and she's a lecturer for Georgia Tech. Uh, she specializes in demand-driven supply chain networks. Uh, in particular, uh, she specializes in strategic procurement and business performance management. Uh, here at Georgia Tech and SEL, she also teaches courses in demand-driven supply networks and performance management systems. Uh, she's also the managing partner of D4 Solutions. Uh, they're a boutique consulting firm. They're out of uh, Oklahoma. They specialize in assessing and redesigning supply chain networks uh, for small and medium companies. Um, before that, she led the strategic sourcing and performance management practice for MRM Plus Partners. Uh, with that introduction, I'm going to go ahead and turn the session over to Paula. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome all of you to this webinar. Uh, I was taking a look at the rooster of participants, and I am very excited to see that we have people from several countries in Latin America, from North America, and from Asia, and a few from um, Europe. So this is definitely a diverse crowd, and I hope that I can uh, give you some of the, uh, an idea of some of the topics that will be discussed during the Measuring and Managing Performance Seminar that will take place the first week of November. And I also hope that we get a lot of questions today so we can hear a little bit about what are the, the, the concerns that people in different parts of the globe have when it comes to measuring and managing performance. So, of course, the first thing, the first order of business is to talk a little bit about why is uh, performance measuring and management an important topic today. The first um, aspect of the relevance of this topic is, of course, leadership. Managing performance is one of the, I'd say, top three responsibilities of leaders nowadays because it is only through the measuring and managing of performance that you can really develop the potential of your team, which is, of course, of the uttermost uh, importance for leaders today. The second aspect of this relevance is, of course, performance improvement. We are today dealing with a marketplace that, because it's become more and more global, it's become also more competitive. So only to the extent that we can exceed every expectation in terms of performance in the marketplace where we're at, we'll be able to compete uh, in, in this particular uh, scenario. So leadership performance improvement, and then of course the data explosion. Today we have so much data available, it is so big, it has the potential to be so detailed, so it, there's so many different ways in which it can be dissected and understood that it can become very overwhelming. So only to the extent that you are able to manage the way in which you are not only gathering that data, but using it for your leadership purposes and to improve, improve your performance, you will be able to get the best use out of those mountains and mountains of data that your ERPs and other systems are probably providing you nowadays. So with that said, these are the three uh, conceptual blocks, if you will, 
that we will be covering and discussing during our time in November at Georgia Tech. First of all, we're going to talk about uh, performance metrics, which is, of course, the basis of managing and measuring performance. Then we're going to be talking about dashboards, which is, as I'm sure you, you know, the compilation of the appropriate metrics in order to be presented, aligned, and used in a strategic manner. And finally, we will discuss also what type of strategic functions can be achieved through the use of performance measurements and the way in which we manage those. So let's talk a little bit about performance metrics. The first and most important thing to understand is that there is four different types of performance metrics. And after about 10 years of doing this, I have yet to see a performance metric that does not um, fit between, you know, amongst one of these. So the first ones are, of course, your financial uh, metrics. Are those are those related to the cost um, and, you know, the utilization of financial resources within your organization. The second type of metric is our, excuse me, the productivity metrics. These, a lot of us understand them also as efficiency metrics, and it basically refers to what are we doing with the available resources. By resources, I mean, of course, our human talent, the assets that we have in the company, and of course, those resources that we gather from third parties that uh, work or those assets that come from organizations outside of our own. So financial metrics, productivity metrics. The third type is what we know as velocity metrics. Some people call them also time metrics, and they basically measure how long does it take us to do something, whatever the activity is. As you can imagine, the, the time that it takes us to do something has implications not only in the more evident, you know, day-to-day -day activities to measure performance, but also in very key aspects of our financial performance. These velocity metrics include things like the cash-to-cash -cash flow, cash-to-cash -cash cycles, the um, purchasing cycle which has an impact in our, you know, receivables and payable accounts. So these type of metrics that are sometimes, uh, you know, seen as less than crucial become very important when you think about the performance metrics for your organization. And the last um, type of metrics that we will explore are those related to quality which is basically what is the probability that whatever function we do is done without making an error, is done perfectly. So, well, the first thing, the first question that i like to ask you today, once that we've taken a look at these performance metrics, is according to you, within your organization, which of these types of metrics get more visibility. Financial metrics, productivity metrics, velocity, or quality metrics. Okay, so um, the question, which type of metrics get more visibility in your organization? If you could just type your answer into the question chat window, uh, we'd appreciate that. Oh, I, see a, I see a couple of uh, quality and a velocity answer. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, two or three folks. It looks like uh, financial um, probably has the most. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not surprised whatsoever. First of all, the financial performance metrics 
are directly related to uh, our financial statement in an organization. So from that perspective, it is very well uh, understood that they're gonna have a lot of relevance. But also, financial metrics are some of the easiest to build because the information is readily available because we're talking about money that comes in and out. So those types of transactions get very well documented within organizations. The productivity metrics are also very common in organizations. Uh, you guys are probably very familiar with metrics like lines per man hour or you know deliveries per hour in a vehicle. What is important, and we will discuss this at length in November, is to set those metrics up properly. Unfortunately, we have a tendency to take a look at any number and consider it a performance metric, a KPI, when in reality, a lot of the information that we're gathering from our daily activities, if you will, are not quite performance measurements. They are rather activity profiles, something that gives us an idea of what is going on, but that doesn't necessarily give us a uh, judgment about something being done properly or not, or the performance being uh, sufficiently good or not. What it is true is that metrics like velocity or quality are probably the most difficult and the, the most, um, the least common of metrics because in many ways, Measuring them is very difficult. I mean, if you think of velocity um, metrics, except for somebody with a you know, stopwatch at the beginning and at the end of every process, you need very automated processes in order to be able to really capture how much time uh, does it take you to do something to the point that in many of the consulting exercises that we've done in the last few years, we usually, you know, go to people and ask them, how long would you say that it takes you to do A or B activity? Which is, of course, less than ideal, but a lot of what we're going to talk about in November is also you got to crawl before you run, and it is preferable to have some information that may not be gathered, gathered in a perfect way than to have no information at all. So velocity metrics are not very common because they're difficult to, to collect data for them. And quality, even though um, it is an important one and people tend to look at quality uh, metrics very closely, but this is true for quality of product, quality of output. Few companies take a close look at the quality of the processes that take place. And when we're talking about performance management in supply chain and logistics, it is key to talk about quality in the process of supply chain and logistics. So. When we talk about quality and when we'll talk about quality in November, we're going to talk less about the quality of the outputs of the products that we'll put out and more about the quality of our supply chain and logistics processes. So once we understand well the type of performance metrics, we will talk a little bit about how do you design performance metrics. When you talk about designing performance metrics, there's five principles that are key to follow. The first one is the balance. When you talk about financial productivity, velocity, and quality metrics, the reason why those four are there is because they really capture the definition of success from many different functions and for many different stakeholders within an organization. So 
it is important that when you design performance metrics, you have a, ba a balanced amount and extent between these four types. The second principle is what we call the principle of alignment. This will be also discussed at length because I would say that if you forget everything that is to be said or has been said about performance metrics, the word alignment is the number one word to remember. No performance of any function or any person within an organization is good in and of itself. The performance of organizations, of functions, and of people are good only to the extent that they support the goals of the business. So it is key that the performance metrics that we design are aligned with the goals of the business. When we have, for example, um, a met a, an objective of um, improving the quality of our product, because we are in a difficult competitive environment and we are trying to take customers from a competitor who we've decided to do this to quality. Probably the performance metrics associated with productivity will not be as um, strict, if you will. They won't be as, as difficult to achieve because we want people to focus in quality. So if that means that certain processes are done, uh, you know, with a little bit more of time, or if certain um, there's certain redundancy, for example, on the processes, that would be okay because that would be aligned with the objective of the business. The third principle is the principle of control. There's few things more frustrating for an employee than to be measured for something that they cannot control. Perhaps the only exception to this general rule is performance metrics that are associated with the general performance of the business. But of course, I mean, you need to have somebody who understands what is, what is the role that they play in the general performance of the business so they have some skin in the game of the business performing well as a whole. I unfortunately have encountered a number of organizations in which the business is losing millions of dollars in the, you know, for the last five years. And somehow, all the employees in the organization get their bonuses because they did what the business needed them to do or what people thought they needed, the business needed them to do. Clearly, their results did not support that. So it is important that people have control over the metrics that are applied to them, but there is also something to be said for having some stake in the general performance of the business. The fourth principle for designing indicators is what is called lateral coherence. You will create, when you design performance metrics, um, metrics for different functions of the organization. As you know, many functions in the organization have conflicting goals. If you think about the goals of a commercial department, for example, of some salespeople, and the um, goals of a, an inventory manager, for example. Their goals are conflicting. You know, the, the sales person wants as many SKUs available as possible. They want them to be, you know, up to the roof in inventory so they can promise their customers minutes in lead time. But if you talk to the inventory manager, they want few SKUs, they want to have little uh, stock, no safety stock, they want the customers to wait as, you know, as long as they need, hopefully, to be made to order. Um, so it is really important that when you have multiple functions with different goals, there is a coherence between what you're asking on one and what you're asking of the other. 
in my little example about the salesperson and the inventory manager, you cannot ask the salesperson to grow sales 20% and at the same time as the inventory manager to reduce inventory costs by 20% because these are conflicting goals and you need your metrics to be coherent laterally. And finally, the principle of aggregability, which is the ability to aggregate the performance metrics from lower levels of the organization all the way up to the CEO or the president. This is key because it's what's going to allow you to communicate to higher hierarchies, if you will, in the organization, providing them the information that they want and that is relevant. No CEO is interested in how many lines per hour the guys from the plant are accomplishing. He cares about the, you know, the productivity metric that will aggregate all the plants, all the um, you know, sales personnel, all the inventory, all the warehouses. The, so he can talk about output per uh, full-time employee, for example, in the company. So the principle of aggregability is really what is going to make it possible for you guys to um, communicate your performance to higher functions in the organization. Once we've discussed, or when we will have discussed the principles of performance metrics, we will also talk of some of the characteristics that performance metrics need, need to have to be effective to measure and to manage performance in an organization. You probably are familiar to a certain extent with this acronym SMART. If you're not, it is an easy way to remember some of the characteristics of, perform of successful performance metrics. SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Well, they don't require a whole lot of uh, explanation. They're pretty self-explanatory. But what you can see is that these characteristics align pretty well with the principles to design performance metrics. So we're talking about specific and measurable. And, you know, the measurable part is what sometimes gets complicated in, in certain types of performance indicators like the velocity and the quality. Attainable, because again, we, we sometimes have a tendency to ask a lot from people uh, in the hope that we're going to get only a, a portion of that performance we're asking of them. But, you know, the more studies that are being made regarding managing performance, the more people realize that only to the extent that people feel that the expected performance is attainable for them, they actually put their effort into doing it. Otherwise, when they know it's never going to happen, they just let go of it and they don't, they don't put as much effort as they would otherwise. Of course, realistic and timely, what it means is something that can be measured in, in actual terms, in real terms, and in the appropriate time with the appropriate time horizon to really demonstrate what the performance is. So those are the three things that we will discuss when we talk about uh, the performance metrics themselves, type, principle, and characteristic. Once we've covered in November the, uh, these three aspects of performance metrics, we're going to talk a little bit about dashboards. Some of you may call them scorecards. Some um, can call them performance boards. But in general, what a dashboard is, is a tool. I've seen them in the most sophisticated of ERPs, and I've seen them on Excel spreadsheets. But the thing is, it is a tool that allows you to 
aggregate and to understand how the performance of those functions gives uh, or, or supports the performance of the business in general. I'd like to ask you here, how many of you have a single dashboard, and I'm not talking about financial statements, but a tool that captures different types of metrics for the whole organization? Okay, so if uh, you could type into the chat or question window, um, anybody out there, if you have a single dashboard where you can evaluate or, or visualize general performance, uh, let us know. Or if you have any other comments, you can type them in about the dashboard, you can type them in there as well. It's not good. I, I don't see anybody uh, uh, saying that they have a single dashboard. Okay, so no. Okay, there's, there's, there's no, there comes some people. Um, it looks like uh, uh, some people have multiple dashboards, mm -hmm. and then some people have single dashboards, but just for specific areas, uh, which are uh, generated by different teams. Uh, somebody had made a comment that uh, an ISO 9001 compliant employer, mm -hmm. like they obviously had that as an initiative. Uh, and somebody mentioned they have dashboard, dashboards via Excel files. Um, uh-huh, and that's perfectly fine. The level of sophistication of the tool used for the dashboard has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of the dashboard. Well, I'm glad to hear that there's some of you that have, if not a single tool, a, tool, a, a number, of, a variety of tools that capture all the performance. Some of you were mentioning something that is key, which is a lot of these dashboards are prepared by different functions, by different organizations within a company. That is absolutely key. We tend to have a difficult time sharing tools or sharing uh, the way in which we measure or capture information. <clears throat> and that, has a, that is a problem in itself. Uh, when we discuss a little bit the concept of alignment within the dashboard, we are going to definitely look into that. And the other thing that we're going to talk about when we talk about alignment in the dashboard is that alignment has to be achieved not only across the organization, but also upward. When we talk about alignment, we're talking about the achieving of goals that support the objectives of the CEO. We've always said that we need to create like tattoos that have these five uh, performance metrics because these are the metrics that are important to your bosses, 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 boss. So when you talk to a CEO, they get paid to achieve growth, profitability, liquidity, efficiency, and to create value for all the stakeholders of the company. Not only the shareholders, but all the stakeholders. So dashboards need to be designed in a way in which they can become aligned with the CEO's performance metrics that respond to these types of objects. So alignment becomes the, the initial and the most important aspect of dashboard. One of the ways of achieving this is another component of our discussion about dashboard that is going to be the three-dimensional aspect of dashboard. Most of you probably have seen dashboards that have one dimension, maybe two. What do I mean by that? Dashboards that have, what is it that is being measured? So let's say lines per um, man hour and the perspective or the context, I'm sorry, in which it is being measured, meaning lines per hour in the Atlanta warehouse, lines per hour in the Oklahoma warehouse, so it is usually a two-dimension dashboard. Today, we are talking about 
three-dimensional performance dashboard in which I not only have the object, which is what is it that I'm measuring, and the context in which I say, you know, per line of product, per product, per warehouse, but I also have different perspectives. Because it turns out that what the shareholders of the company want to know is not the same thing that what the CEO wants to know, is not the same thing that the, you know, operators of the plant want to know, or the supervisors. So you need to create dashboards and, you know, will or I'll teach you and show you how to build this dashboard that allow you to have not only a perspective or a dimension in terms of what to measure, but also in which con context and to be presented to whom. One thing that I would like to stress at this point is that for those of you that will join us during our class in November, it is key that you bring your dashboard or your scorecard. We want to see and evaluate and really analyze what is the information that you're capturing and make the necessary adjustments to ensure that you will, you know, take home a product that has been improved by the participation in the class. So, you know, we'll wait, we'll, we expect you in Atlanta with your dashboards under your arm to really work on them and make them better because of your participation. So that is for the uh, dashboard. And I was, as I was mentioning earlier, the third conceptual block of uh, our course in November is what do we do with the performance metrics that we find and that we design and with the performance that we manage. So as you can imagine, the first thing that we do with performance management is to improve that performance. What you don't measure, you cannot improve because, well, on one hand, you don't know what the base is. But on the other, you don't understand what components of that general notion of, you know, in quotation, in quote, good performance are the ones that need to be affected to improve your performance. So the first thing that you do when you manage performance is, of course, trying to improve that performance. The second one, which is key for supply chain and logistics uh, managers and directors, is project justification. I am sure that I am not alone in the feeling that you know, the supply chain and the logistics and the procurement functions sometimes tend to be seen as cost centers, as, you know, operational activities that don't necessarily provide a lot of value to the organization. The only way in which you can really, you know, change that perception, perception sorry, from a lot of organizations is to justify the investments, the decisions that you make with what is the impact that they will have on the general performance of the company. And that can only be achieved if you have a very close understanding of how do your activities impact the general performance. AKA, if your performance measures, measures are aligned with the general company, with the CEO performance measures. So when you start thinking of what is going to be the internal rate of return of a project that I will put together. What is the return on capital? What is the net present value? If you really want to, um, you know, provide a comprehensive list or, or picture of the impact that any of your projects which, you know, in supply chain and logistics, our projects tend to be expensive. We, we don't like little things that don't cost anything. We want multi-million dollar plants or, you know, the development of a, of a distribution center that costs $3 million. If, if we really want to be able to go to a board and say, 
I need this kind of money, I need to tell them not necessarily how many minutes per truck will I improve in terms of the utilization of the asset, but I need to be able to tell them this is the impact that it has in growth. This is the impact in terms of service, you know, delivery of the service promise to our customer. So really, another way of thinking of the performance metrics is as tools that we'll use to achieve our goals in terms of gaining more resources for our supply chain and logistics function. And the third and perhaps most important thing of the, you know, associated with the strategic use of performance measurement is benchmarking. Benchmarking is the art of comparing yourself to the best in the business. We are going to spend a good amount of time discussing how to design benchmarks that make sense, that are logical, but forgetting about this idea that unless I have exactly the same size, exactly the same geography, exactly the same market, I cannot compare with anybody. Because we, we have a tendency to do that, and of course, it'd be ideal to say, okay, this company that is my absolutely identical twin is performing in this manner, and therefore that should be a benchmark for me. But, you know, the reality of the world is that that is very rarely possible. So you need to put together benchmarking exercises that provide you insight about the opportunities for improvement that you will have in your business, but that not necessarily are 100% aligned with uh, the reality of, of this business. So those are the three um, lines of, of, you know, exploration that we'll have uh, during our course in November. We'll talk about type principles and quality of performance metrics. We will talk about dashboards. We will talk about the strategic use of the performance metrics. And you know, we will, and I cannot stress this enough, we will work on the improvement, evaluation, and analysis of the participants' scorecards, scoreboards, or dashboards. So we can really send you out of there with something that you can bring home and say, okay, because of the last two and a half days I've accomplished this type of thing. So I hope that I've been able to give you a, a good understanding of what we'll be doing in November. And right now I would like to open it to, to the participants and to Andy to tell us what kind of questions you may have. Okay. Thanks, Paula. Uh, if you have any questions, please type them into the question or chat window, and we'll get to them. I, I know we had some. Uh, let me look at my notes. Uh, uh, during the principles of performance metrics slide, uh, somebody had asked, uh, how do you apply lateral coherence with departments that have conflicting goals? I know you mentioned okay. a little bit about the sales and warehousing example, but maybe you could talk a little bit more to that. Absolutely. Um, you know that that is this is true of most um, situations within a company. The, the very design of the organizational chart of many companies is driven by having balance between you know the, the design goals. Because imagine if you let people from purchasing run the company, then you would have the cheapest. Uh, components of all time, you would have multi-year um, contracts with suppliers, you know, tons of volume, but you may be in trouble in terms of the quality of those components, you may be in trouble in terms of, uh, you know, your inventory holding costs, because of course all these volumes mean that we are, we are receiving so much stuff that Carrying it is very expensive. So it is very seldom that one sees a dashboard with performance metrics for different functions that are not 
a hundred percent. You know, as as big a an impact, as big a performance as you can get. And the problem with that is that by everybody doing their best, the performance of the company gets worse. So you end up with, you know, procurement trying to save as much as possible, the production people trying to utilize the plant assets as much as possible, the inventory people trying to reduce inventory carrying costs as much as possible. And if they all achieve that goal, they're putting other functions at risk. So it is important to lose the apprehension with creating performance dashboards that tell a production manager it is okay for the next year to utilize assets at a 60%. It's okay, that's where I want you to be because this year it is my growth year, so I'm going to be introducing 20% more SKUs and I need you to run short um, production budgets for example. So lateral coherence is one of the hardest um, principles to achieve, but, you know, companies are complex systems, and by definition, a complex system can only be optimized when you sub-optimize its components. So, I mean, it is a difficult one, but it is certainly a very relevant one. Okay, yeah, we had a comment earlier. Um, it doesn't directly relate to conflicting goals, but uh, they, they made a comment that they don't have a dashboard, but they're looking to develop some for supply chain and logistic metrics, uh, like mm -hmm. on-time delivery. Uh, and then they mentioned the challenges doing it in a manner that departments, which um, have nothing to do with supply chain and logistics, like mm -hmm. how to do it for those groups that don't have a great understanding of supply chain and logistics. That is a very, very relevant question. And the short answer is you give them a stake on the performance of those, um, you know, on the, on the results of those performance metrics. What I mean is think about a procurement goal, for example, that says you need to achieve 30% savings through the use of alternate sources. This is something that we see often. I work a lot in the aerospace industries, and this is something that you see often because we're talking about assets that are extremely expensive to maintain. You say, okay, now the problem is that for you to be able to use alternate sources, you need the support of people like engineering, quality, that don't really have a lot of knowledge in terms of, you know, what it represents to have serious savings in, in the purchase of components. So at the beginning, those people may very well tell you, too bad, you know, I don't care how much you need to save, I have risk managing concerns and those are the ones that I'm going to be uh, aiming for. Only when you go to engineering and to quality and say, okay, engineering and quality people, 5% or whatever it is of your bonus, for example, this year, will be driven by the number of um, parts, for example, or the number of alternate sources that you approved this year. So there are ways of um, making the accomplishment of metrics something important for everybody. There's something, I guess I should include it as another principle of creating performance metrics, which is people do whatever you paid them to do. So think about whatever it is. If you, if you give somebody the incentive to, accom to accomplish something, they will accomplish it. You just need to make sure that those incentives are aligned with what the company wants. Otherwise, you may very well be paying them to, you know, drive into bankruptcy. But it is true that you're going to have organizations not only that don't care about how you perform, but that because of the nature of their work, of their work, don't want you to perform as well as you'd like to perform. 
you need to make it important for them for those goals to be achieved. Okay. Thanks. Um, on the subject of metrics, uh, we had a question, can you speak to the dangers of metric dilution? Mm, I, I'm not sure exactly what they mean by dilution. So um, I don't know if the person who made the question can elaborate a little. I, I'll talk a little bit, hopefully, to that <laughs> point, which is dilution by the number of metrics that you end up having. In general, you know, there's some of us that would like to have as few metrics as possible that capture the performance of the organization. But as you go down on the organ in the hierarchy, if you will, people sometimes want to know as much, as much as possible about everything. So yeah, and, and yeah, she comments like, you know, when you have too many metrics, you know, that none are important. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, good. I, I guess right about the, <laughs> the, the, what she meant by dilution. You're absolutely correct. It is a very real um, risk, a very real danger. It happens with a lot of frequency that you have, you know, a hundred page reports that don't really tell you a thing about how the performance of John and Peter and Sean at the warehouse is contributing to the accomplishments of the goals of the business. The, the answer to that is to create metrics that have alignment, that you can tell that by the utilization of this machine in the plant, you are impacting the, you, you know, the asset, the return on investment, for example. So, you can only, and you know, trust me, a lot of the metrics out there will not pass that test. A lot of metrics, you'll end up realizing that they, you know, they may be nice to know things, but a lot of them don't pass the test of, can I tell from this metric if this function is contributing to the goal of the business or not? So that would be the number one test that I would put all these metrics through. Um, the slide uh, where you talked about performance dashboard alignment with uh, you know growth, profitability, liquidity, efficiency, value creation. Uh, there was a question: What about objectives regarding the environmental and social impact? Okay. Of well, in general, when we talk about profitability, we speak to more than money. Uh, there is, I'm sure, you're a lot of you are familiar with what is called the triple baseline, the three P's, people, planet, and profit. So when we talk about value creation for the stakeholders and profitability, we are really talking about what are those, um, what is the performance doing for all the stakeholders of a company that includes the shareholders, includes the environment, includes the employees, and the communities in which a company has an impact at all. Okay. Um, the slide relating to tridimensional performance dashboards, when you, uh, you are addressing object, context, and perspective, um, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, um, people, somebody was asking like how many KPI should a dashboard have? Okay, and you know, a little bit to the point we were making earlier, the answer is, as the answer to 95% of the questions in supply chain management, it depends. I've always said that I'm going to give my students t-shirts that say it depends. There is not a, a, a you know, final answer to that question. It depends on, you know, what, how many objects you have to measure, how many contexts do you have, and how many perspectives do you need to address. And, you know, at the end of the day, it depends on how many aspects of performance do you need to capture to make sure that the activities of people on, the day -to -day, on their day-to-day jobs are really contributing to the 
company's performance as a whole. Great. Um, so, does anybody, if anybody has any more questions, uh, please feel free to type them into the question chat window um, while we wait for those. Uh, you know, we hope everybody found this uh, interesting. Uh, if you have, uh, if you're interested in coming to our course, I mean, please uh, take a look at the course page at the URL that's noted on the this last slide. Uh, if you have any questions that you think of um, about the subject matter or the course um, after we hang up today, uh, please send them to webinar at scl.gotech.edu, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, also wanted to mention we have uh, different accounts with uh, social media um, outlets. Uh, we have a Facebook page. If you just go to uh, do a search on Georgia Tech SEL, you'll find us. Uh, we have a Twitter account. So um, if you follow us, you'll get updates on uh, courses, events. I mean, we post uh, tweets about interesting articles uh, that relate to supply chain logistics on a daily basis. Uh, we have a couple of LinkedIn groups. If you do a search, search on Georgia Tech Supply Chain, those will pop up. Uh, we have one just uh, for our general community. Um, we have uh, one specific to our lean alumni and lean group. Um, uh, also, when you look at a Georgia Tech, we have uh, a new initiative, the Supply Chain Network. It's a uh, You can read a little bit more about that uh, on that LinkedIn group page. Uh, also, we have a YouTube channel. It, uh, YouTube dot com slash gtscl where you'll find uh, you'll find this archive when it's available other archives of uh, previous sessions if you're interested in some other uh, um, supply chain areas like warehousing uh, uh, demand planning um, sourcing those types of uh, the, those types of areas um, I guess other than that we don't have any immediate questions so you know, I want to thank everybody for taking the time. I, I know that there's people out there in different time zones, so if it's morning, uh, afternoon, or evening, uh, thanks. Again. And other than that, Paula, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it, and we'll, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll have you back soon. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you.